All right, so Andrew, here's the problem. You have 20 seconds to get out of a burning motor. Okay, so you have okay. to you lift up the handles. Well, I got 20 seconds, I'm, I'm here. I'm having nap time, right? <laughs> having nap time? Oh okay. no, there's a fire! We gotta do this. Get out, get out. How does that stay open? <laughs> You're used to I'm gonna die, that's it, I die. I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna hit that thing out. And I'm gonna... You need to go out feet first. Yeah. And you'll have to go on your tummy. As you go around, so you don't want to you don't want to scrape yourself off there. I don't fit. I'm gonna <laughs> die. <laughs> that, that, that I'm gonna die. die. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> yeah. Who built this? Hi and welcome. That was our son's crazy reaction when we showed him the fire escape window in our motorhome. His reaction was funny, but it does bring up some serious and important points. Now, we need to say right off the bat, we are not fire people. We're not retired or active. We've never had anything men. to do with fire. We've never had, we are not motorhome building experts. We are not any of those things. We are just experts at keeping ourselves alive. At least we're well motivated. We're well motivated <laughs> to keep ourselves alive. Let's take a look at what the manufacturer has provided for fire escapes. Okay. There are three fire escapes in this 2019 Tiffin Allegro 36LA. The first one is the front door, which is great as long as the front end is not on fire and the door is not blocked. Right. The second one is a window over top of the couch. Um, you can push it out. You'd have to... I don't know. I wouldn't want to jump out head first because it's a pretty <laughs> long <laughs> drop. So you're going to have to sort of turn around, crawl over the couch and get out that way, I guess. Right. And then is the bedroom window. And it's pretty small. It's There's a chest of drawers under underneath it. So you have to sort of get up on this little piece of counter and try to put your legs out first. And so in some RVs, uh, like this one that's shown in Mac the Fire Guy's video, the bed is right up against the window, which is great. But in ours, like he said, we have this chest of drawers and it's a couple of feet from the bed. So that's kind of a problem. Mac suggests opening and propping the window open, throwing a blanket over the edge, over the sharp edge of the window, and going out feet first. How far is that? six seven feet yeah down from the window so I am five foot one inches tall the drop from the window ledge for me from my hips to the ground is well over four feet because I am short okay I'm also 68 and I have osteopenia and if you don't know what that means that means that my bones break fairly easily so I will break something when I hit the ground and you say so what that's what's the big deal you'll be alive well maybe um, the question is, is for how long? Because if I fall, I break something, I can't move. Derek has to come out, drop down himself, hoping he doesn't break something. And, and hoping I don't hit her because right, she's already on the ground. Drag me or carry me away. And in which case, if the fire explodes, then we're both toast. And that pun is intended. <laughs> now, in this video by retired firefighter Mac the Fire Guy, he gives us the unwelcome news that we have 20 seconds to get out of a burning RV before we're overcome by smoke and fumes. Not very long. Not very long at all. We're going to try and answer three questions. One, can I get from the floor to the ledge by that fire escape window in my motorhome? Number two, are there any alternatives besides using that little tiny window? And number three, in the case of an RV fire, can we get out of that tiny fire escape window? And can we both do it in 20 seconds or less? Let's find out. Okay, so we've got a fire, we have 20 seconds. And the question is, how do I get my feet out? Because I don't have enough I guess I could, I guess I could probably do it. Oh man, it's hard. Okay, now I already tried it. I'm not gonna film it and there is no way. I know you say, well, there's a fire coming. No, 
I don't think so. I would probably try to find some other, I'd probably go out through the fantastic fan. I don't know what I do, but I can't get out that window. The answer, no, no, we can't. No, mm -hmm. at least not the way the manufacturer has envisioned with you getting up on the ledge and out the window. That isn't gonna work. Feet first, yeah. Feet first, head first, I, however they envision it. I don't know, but it can't. We are not able to do it. And honestly, if you're of a larger body size, if you are less able, if you're older and can't bend that way, or, then, or half asleep, <laughs> or are asleep, you're not going to be able to get out. So let's take a look at the problem. First is getting out from the floor onto that shelf by the fire escape window. The shelf below the fire escape window is 33 and a half inches from the floor, 34 inches wide, and 15 and a half inches deep. There's a 30 inch span between the bed and the shelf, plus the shelf is four inches higher than the bed. So using the bed to get to the window won't work. There's no time to get a stool or a chair. Climbing up on that shelf is the only way. So in researching this, we found this video from Mark and Sue from Our Journey in Miles. If you don't follow them, you totally should because their videos are fun and they're funny and they're really helpful. Yeah. So. And so his solution to this problem was to make a board that he stores in the bedroom and that he can get out and put between his bed and the window and get on it and back out of the window. We thought this was ingenious. <laughs> yeah, it was so great. We started looking at ours and our configuration's a little different. Our bed is not at the same height as the window ledge like his bed is. So what I did is I, I made a folding leg. So we put the Put the board up, fold the leg down, and it has a snapping hinge joint on it that you can snap it so it doesn't fold up again. So great, we have the board, what next? In looking at Mac the Fire Guy's video, he suggests that you take a quilt or blanket, drag it off your bed and throw it over the edge so that you don't rip or, as he says, leave body parts <laughs> on the window ledge. Well, to me, that was extra seconds that I didn't think we had to throw over the edge, take the quilt and throw it over the edge. So I solved this problem by making this little pad that you can see here um, out of just some fabric that I found at Joann's and I bound it because I'm a quilter and that's what I had to do. And we fastened it, on, we stapled it onto the edge of the board. And now all we have to do is flip that attached pad over the window ledge. It almost automatically happens when and you start to back up. That's right. it just, it, your feet just push it out exactly, the window anyway. Your feet so. just push it out the window. So that solved that problem. But there's still that big scary drop. So we went to Home Depot or Lowe's or somewhere and we got a couple of fire escape ladders. So it appears that it's really, really wobbly. So we're gonna... It may work very well for a house, but for a motorhome, yeah. not so much. And we tried those. <laughs> they were more scary than the drop because they went they around were. and they hit the side and uh, they were yeah, really frightening. Was, I was like, I couldn't was... even get up. I couldn't even climb up it. Let well, and, and the it. way they hook on, they're intended to be used on a house. Right. And and the RV has like lots thinner walls mm -hmm. and they just, the hooks just don't work. They were work. Really terrible. They just you know, Maybe you could modify them yeah. somehow, but we didn't want to. We, we, that just didn't seem to work for us, so, right. so we didn't use those. Okay, so in the video from Mac the Fire Guy, he mentions this ladder that he found that has hooks on it that you can just put out the window and rip off the Velcro. It extends out, yeah, it's really cool. extends down, and you can use it as you get out. But he didn't provide any links for it. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't know no where to get where it. Got it. And so we looked around and looked around and looked around. Finally, I found this this ladder that's six and a half feet, and it looked like I'd be able to add hooks to it. So we got it from Amazon with the ability to return it if we didn't and like we it. And we have the link below. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, it had little caps that you could take off. I found that a one and eighth inch dowel rod would just go down right inside without any problem. And I attached hooks to those, attached the dowel rod to the, to the ladder, and it will collapse up. You can hook it onto the edge, and pull off the Velcro. It extends down without any problem. So I've got, I think it's inch and an eighth. 
doll rod and it is just the right size to go inside the hole that's right here. I just take off the little cap on each side. So I just slip this in. And get that hole lined up. Take this little tab here and make sure the hole's in the right place. There, go. there it is. Okay. It's very important before you do it, you need to make sure you have a hole that your screw will fit into. Because this is very hard wood, you won't be able to just screw into it. You'll have to have a lead hole for your, for your screw. But, but does how it fast work can we do it? <laughs> to get us out of the RV in 20 seconds? And that's what we were going to try and find out. We think the key to having a plan is practicing that plan. So have you ever been in an emergency department and watched she has. <laughs> yeah, and seen a code blue or some kind of emergency going on and watched everybody and it looks like everybody knows exactly what they're doing and everybody has a different job and everybody knows what their job is. How do they know what they're doing and how do they know what to do? Well, the answer is protocols. The answer is that they have a plan and they practice the plan and every person knows every job. So that's what we decided that we needed a protocol. So where a plan might not actually work, we decided we should try it out. So since we were in Idaho visiting our son, we thought we'll take the RV to his house into his big driveway and we will try this and we'll film the whole crazy process. <laughs> So here's the plan, AKA the protocol. Number one, fire alarm goes off. Number two, we jump out of bed. Number three, Peggy opens and props the window. Number four, kind of simultaneously, Derek takes the ladder off the wall, hands it to me, and I hook it on the edge and unzip the Velcro. Right. While Derek is getting the board. He pulls the board out of its spot, opens the leg up, and then I'm on the other side of it and I snap the, the hinge into place. Right. Then I get up on the board and back out, putting my feet on the ladder. And then Derek is up on the board and he comes out and ta-da, we're out. Right. Let's just see. <laughs> Simple, right? Let's see what happens. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. He survived. Now the next question is, is can I do it? I don't know. Back, 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 back. Run. Yeah. Once you get one rung, put your put your other foot out on that rung, and then work your way. Well, they can't. Grab a hold of the countertop. No. I've got it. I've got the countertop. Okay. Holy crap. <laughs> okay. Now get the edge out. of the window. What? I'm glad you love me, Jim. <laughs> Okay, this is done 20 seconds in and of itself. Getting me off.
these suckers out to grandma. One minute, three seconds. Oh, darn. Because We're this is our very again. first time yep. of actually. First time of doing the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Practice. Practice. That's the whole key to being able to get your family out of an RV fire is to practice, to come up with a plan and then practice that plan. And that's what we're trying to do. Now, we do have another possibility that we'll show you here in just a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, we're gonna reboot, reset, and try it again. Okay, 47.29, probably almost 20, 20 seconds. almost 20. Nice. And um, the blue thing um, was out at 19.55. So we made, so what does yeah. that say? That says practice, practice helps. will help. All right, so using the board and the ladder is one way and we've got a plan and we've tried it. It sort of works, it's a little bit long, but it still will get us out. It was at least a plan. Yeah, it's at least right. a plan. And we did get it from 60 seconds down to about 40 seconds. And, so and maybe with a little more practice, we could get it down to 30 or something. Maybe I don't know. we could. And so it's not great. It's not perfect, but it is. It is a plan. Definitely a plan. But what if you're of a body size or ability, or if you have children, or if you have children with disabilities or who are autistic, who are not going to go down any kind of ladder, what kind of alternatives are there out there? We kept looking and we found this. Take a look. This is a fireproof cloak. We got these on Amazon. They come in child size as well as adult size. And I believe this one was $69.99. I'm going to put a link below so you can take a look at these. So we're gonna pull one of these out and we're gonna show it to you and we're gonna see if we can get them out and get out of here in 20 seconds or less. So we've decided that we're going to take these out of the little pouch that they came in simply because in this small amount of space and in such a short amount of time, there really isn't any way that we could get it out. So this is what we're going to try. We're going to Velcro this right here. It's, it'll be right there. And so it won't interfere with the slide at all. And as somebody said, think like an airline, have it be unobtrusive but right where you can grab it. So to simulate them being velcroed to the side of the bed we've put them on the floor so that's where they are right now. So we're going to get the alarm we'll see what happens. Here we go. Oh, okay I know it's coming but it's still scared. Okay. That seems so much safer.
Okay, so I was honestly not expecting the fire cloaks to work. To be really honest, I didn't think it would work. I didn't think it would. we could get out of there in 20 seconds. The weird thing is, is they did work. The first time, and even the second time, we were within about 25 seconds from the time our little pretended alarm hit to when we actually were able to get out the door. So I'm gonna do some more checking, but it appears to me that the fire cloaks are really a better option for everybody. You can get them in children's sizes and adult sizes. I think I wanna have the board and the window and the ladder as a backup, but I think the fire cloaks, that's just my opinion. What do you think? The only thing I worry about with the fire cloaks is smoke because it protects against fire, but it doesn't protect against smoke. And that's the only concern I have. But the faster you get up, the less smoke you have. So right. it seems like being able to get out faster, I mean, 25 seconds versus about 50 seconds was our fastest time on the ladder. So it took us twice as long. This is Jennifer, our son Tim. And what were your guys' thoughts? Uh, well, my thoughts were um, it's all good and dandy if there's just two of you to get out the window. But if you have a family, there's no way that's going to work. The window method, there's no way, especially if you have little children, if you're doing this full-time RV. But as far as, you know, the window thing, they're gonna, you're gonna panic, you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night and you're gonna say, what the heck's going on? And that's 20 seconds of your life trying to figure out what's going on. And then you have to get out the window. So the fire cloaks, I think, are a much better idea if you've got more than two people, especially. Um, and especially if you've drilled, especially with your children, um, and I think it's a much safer route. Watching you guys go out that window was a little scary. Um, hoping that you'd have sure footing, it's gonna be, if you imagine the scenario being in the middle of the night, what if it's raining outside? What if it's snowing outside? That ladder is not going to be predictable. So you go out the door the way it was supposed to be. And so I think those cloaks are a much better idea. Now, is it sound theory? Is it sound science that you throw in a cloak and actually are actually magically, you know, um, safe from flames? I don't know, but it looked a lot better that way to me. So yeah, you gotta find out what works for you um, and grab your cat. You stepped over Phoebe. I mean, I was disappointed in so many respects. Quincy, my son who did it, he has special needs, he's autistic. Um, and so trying to coach him to go down the ladder was a little interesting. Another good reason to use the cloak. That is a lot easier to coach a child into putting on the cloak. Yeah. He's 12 and teaching him how to go down the ladder and in a panic situation, especially a child with disabilities yeah. is not going to listen to you at all. At all. That's meltdown city for kids with disabilities. They're not so gonna go oxygen. down the window and you got 20 seconds and that's another one that's going to be staying in there saying, nope, I'm not leaving because this is not in my routine. Yeah, okay. Now back up and put your feet out, the, put one foot out, the, well, both feet out the window. And then, okay, now what you do is with one leg you reach out and see if you can feel you want to help him, Tim? rung of the ladder. Up no, 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 go back, go back, or, Quincy. No, no, he's fine, he can do that one, that's fine. He can can't feel it. Yeah, well, it's, you're too low, you, it, it's not very far out. Push that thing, yeah. Right there. there you go. Okay, now hold on to this, hold on to this, and put your other foot down. There you go. Hold on tight. Okay, hold on tight there. Yep. Okay, do the next one. Hold on on the other side here. Yep. Very good. And there's Quizzy. But it's so hard. And so if you've got a family, there's lots to consider. So the cloaks, I would definitely consider the traffic cone idea. That's the one I'd go with. You can totally see why I adore my daughter-in-law. She Sorry. is, and you know what? She's right. She's a hundred percent right. Do not let this crazy demeanor fool you. She is right. And getting a kid out that window, I'm sorry, it's just probably not going to happen. Well, not going to happen. If you are considering getting a new motorhome look carefully and try to get one that will allow you to have that egress 
that rear egress out behind the master. That is the number one best way. Unfortunately, that is not an option for many, many, many thousands of us. So that's gonna do it for our fire safety video. Um, I'm not sure if we proved anything good or bad, but. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, if you really only have 20 seconds, you really don't have a lot of options. Um, you can try getting out that window or you can get the fire cloaks, which as Jennifer told me, reminds her of Monty Python. That's gonna do it for now. If you have, please let us know in the comments if you have experienced an RV fire, I hopefully you have not. Or if you have another way to get out of your RV that is better than these two, we're very open to modifying uh, this video or, or, or trying something else if you have some ideas. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, ring the bell to get notified. You bet. And until next time, restless friends, you take care. Bye.